to be completely honest. I don't know if I'm going to drink again. I'm going to tell you why I cut out drinking. I know after all that 25 minutes of me talking, I'm going to tell you why I cut out drinking. I'm going to tell you what I've noticed since I've stopped drinking. And um, I think that'll be the summary of the video. So we went out a couple of months ago and I didn't get wasted, but I'm just like, I didn't like the feeling anymore, right? I don't like the feeling of, I, I like thinking about the smell of alcohol right now makes me feel sick. But um, I didn't like the feeling of like when I get home, right? Feeling tired. I didn't like feeling groggy. I didn't like waking up, potentially having a headache, not feeling well, feeling sluggish, feeling slow, not having a sense of mental clarity. There will be times where I have drunk, drink and the next day, like, or if I drink that weekend heavily and the next day, like I have to work, my brain does not function the same after I've been drinking. Um, not having quality sleep, increased blood pressure, eating more carelessly. Like when you have alcohol in your system, you're more inclined to eat shit. Not literally, but like you'll eat McDonald's, Taco Bell, things like that, where it's like, if you were sober, you know that this is not a good choice for you. You would not touch it. Um, sleeping in late, being more tired, not thinking clearly, uh, making poor choices, driving under the influence of alcohol, um, and so those were all the reasons that I decided to stop drinking again and just also giving my body a break, giving your body a break, a detox from having to process that substance that your body is like constantly trying to clear out because it's, there is no benefit. There is zero benefit. So you also have to think about those things in your life where it's like they're in your life, you do them continually and there's no benefit except for pleasure. You have to ask yourself, why are you still keeping it and do you need it there? Is it necessary? Um, there are studies that show that it's like it impacts your brain. It does cloud your brain. It clouds your judgment. It clouds your thinking. It changes the chemical um, reaction to like how our brain processes things. Uh, alcohol is linked to memory and memory loss, both short term and long term. Alcohol is a carcinogen. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you things that I've researched and read. It's a carcinogen, meaning that the greater consumption of alcohol can lead to a more likely um, positive cancer screening, right? Like you can develop cancerous cells. Um, it's a depressant. That's a big one, you guys. If you are already depressed and you are drinking, like all you are doing are, all you are doing is amplifying those feelings of depression and sadness like just think about it okay like if you drank this weekend and you came home when you're laid in bed scrolling on social media if you are already sad that day it's just gonna make you more sad there's no way around it like there's there's no way around it weed is a depressant too but we're not gonna get into that i don't do weed i don't smoke weed but it's like i know people that do and they're depressed and i'm just like cut the fucking weed out you're making it worse and i know it's hard but i'm like Cut the things out that are making you feel more like shit. Cut the things out that are causing you to make shittier choices. Cut the things out. Have enough self-discipline to cut shit out that's not serving you. Like you have to. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to change and you're not going to improve. Um, it's linked to weight gain. Uh, you drink off one, the calories, right? Unnecessary. Unless you're drinking tequila straight, I think the calories are super low. But if you're drinking mixed cocktails, sugary drinks linked to um, unnecessary calories, higher sugar, it increases your blood pressure. Um, when you are under the influence, you're likely to eat like bar food, fatty foods, fast food. Like it's just all of these things where it's not good for you. It's not good for you. Separate from like the health aspect of it, it's a waste of fucking money. Two cocktails, $30 every weekend, or if you go out twice a weekend, that's $60 every weekend. 60 times four, it's 120 plus 120, 240, 240 a month. You're spending 240 a month on alcohol if you only drink two cocktails. And if those cocktails are $15 a pop, because now cocktails are like $20 a pop. So I can't do math, but just, just think, if you were having two cocktails, if you're having four cocktails each weekend, you are spending $240 a month. I hope my math is right because I'm terrible at math. $240 a month, that's like a real bill. That's like not like a little bill. Like that's like an actual bill. So 
you have to think about all of these things. Like if you were drinking, and I'm not saying you have to stop drinking. I'm saying you should use this video to assess your relationship with alcohol. Assess, are you depressed? Um, assess how you use alcohol. Assess the people that are around you that um, consume alcohol. Assess your patterns. Do you drink more when you are sad? Do you drink more when you are stressed? Do you drink more when you're around a certain person? Um, and I think the last two things that I'm going to say on, oh, three more things. How it's making me feel, um, something I've noticed about people that drink alcohol around me and something I noticed about all of us that drink alcohol. I'll start with the third one. Um, something I noticed about all of us that drink alcohol and I don't give a fuck what your thought is on this statement because I'm going to say it and everything I say on here is real as fuck and it's true. Not everything. Um... Cause I, I haven't absolutely fact checked everything, but I, it's based on truth. Like I don't come on here and say lies is what I'm saying. Right. But, um, every single person, every single person that chooses to drink alcohol is looking to escape something. I do not care you can argue with me as much as you want. If you disagree with that statement, and if you feel like I'm coming for you, it's because you're in denial, okay? And you can come for me in the comments and we can go toe to toe because I will not back down on this. Every single person that chooses to drink alcohol is trying to escape something. You're either stressed, stressed about money, stressed about work, stressed about a relationship. You do it to take the stress off. Um, you are either sad, depressed, it helps you forget, it uplifts you for the moment, right? You're drinking to forget whatever that thing is that's making you sad, that's making you stressed. Um, you are grieving, you're experiencing a loss, so you're using it to mask a feeling or emotion or something that you don't want to deal with. You're using it as a distraction, like every single person. And I get, and I get it. I know some people, because I've had this conversation with someone, He's like, um, no, that's not true. Like, I drink because I, I like the taste of it. No, motherfucker. If you are drinking every fucking day, it's more than just liking the taste. Because I like the taste of fucking ice cream with Reese's Pieces and Oreos. I love the fucking taste of it. I'm not getting it every day. I'm not going out of my fucking way to buy fucking ice cream every fucking day. I love the taste of carrot cake. I'm not eating it every fucking day. There's a fucking muffin that I found the other day at this coffee shop that I'm in love with. I've had the muffin twice in the last um, four months because I discovered it a couple months ago. And I'm like, I, I had it the other day. I love that fucking muffin. I've been thinking about that muffin. I don't go out of my way to get that fucking muffin every day. So the sun is just coming in and out. I need you to be honest with yourself and recognize that if you are going out of your way to drink every weekend or when you drink, you're binge drinking or you are drinking every single day, you are trying to mask something. You can be in denial about it all you want, but there is something that you are trying to run away from. There is a feeling that you are not letting yourself feel. There is something that you are trying to mask and that is not healthy. It's not healthy for us to try to mask things with alcohol. It's not healthy for us to try to mask things with drugs, to try to mask things with a distraction, to try to mask things with sex, with masturbation. That is not healthy. That is you not addressing your problems properly. That's you not letting yourself feel your problems. That's you neglecting your problems, neglecting what your body or mind is telling you that it needs. It's telling you, hey, I need you to address this. I need you to fix that relationship. I need you to forgive yourself. I need you to address that thing that is keeping you stuck. Like that is what's happening here. Um, and I wish this was like the first part of the video. Cause I feel like sometimes I make videos and it's like the first ones are so drawn out, but the most captivating part of the video is like at the end, but I need you guys to realize that, um, I had that realization and I know it. Like when I'm drinking, I'm drinking. One, do I like the taste of alcohol? I like the taste of champagne. I do. And I'm not going to lie. I've the other day I went to, um, I had the day off on Friday and I went to this uh, restaurant bar and was working on some personal stuff, some personal goals that I have. And I'm like, I had 
lunch there and I'm like, it was like dinner. And I'm like, I want a mimosa. Like I want some champagne. Do I miss champagne? Absolutely. I love champagne. I think it tastes lovely. I think it's crisp, but I'm also like, I've done so well. Like I don't want to break that and not that drinking is going to break it, but I want to be more disciplined, right? I want to be able to say, yeah, I love that, but I'm not going to put that thing in my body, right? Because I care about my body more. I care about my progress. I care about my health more than I care about the taste of that. So for those of you saying it's because of the taste, I want you to be honest with yourself. Um, next thing I'll go into is what I've noticed in patterns of people that drink. Um, for some reason, and I don't know why, I'm going to take a sip. For some reason, like, oh my God, there's so many bees right now. There's like a bee nest, like right outside my door. And there's like 10 storming because I think it's getting cold, right? So we're like, let's get in here. Let's get in here. Let's get in here. Let's finish this nest. But um, for some reason, I, and I know this is going to come for some people that I've dated and that's okay. And I'm sorry, but I'm being honest. And if you can't be honest with yourself, that's a different problem. I'm going to be honest. For some reason, like, I attract people that have, I'm not going to call them alcoholics. People have problems with alcohol. My ex that I was with for like 10 years, he was a functioning alcoholic. He was a functioning alcoholic. I remember I dated this one guy. And maybe it was temporary, but it's like he was going to so drunk as fuck all the fucking time embarrassed me at the fucking restaurant, proposed to me at the restaurant because he was drunk. And I know it wasn't a real, but I'm like, you were so, people were fucking looking at us. I was so fucking embarrassed. He was on his knee. I'm like, my face is like twitching because I'm getting like secondhand embarrassment. But um, this other guy, DUI, like I tend to attract people that have problems with drinking this other guy drinks every single day, thinks that that's okay. That's not okay. That's not okay. I'm not a doctor, but that's not okay. That's not okay. I don't, I don't give a fuck what you tell me. It's not okay. I tend to attract people that have problems with drinking and I don't know where that comes from. Um, but what I will say, evaluate the circle. Evaluate your circle, evaluate the person that you're dating, evaluate when you drink the most, evaluate when you feel most inclined to drink, evaluate if that person encourages you to drink, evaluate if your patterns change. This is key. Evaluate if your patterns change when you are around a person. Are you drinking more? Are you drinking less? Are they encouraging? Are they pouring it? Is it because they are drinking? Is it because they are always encouraging things that are like drinking related? You have to pay attention to that stuff. Um, I have someone on my team and we were talking the other day. I forgot what, I think we're talking about alcohol because we're, we're like entering this weight loss challenge and um, they were like, yeah, like I need to stop drinking. Like the guy that I'm seeing is like, he drinks every day or every, something like that. And I'm like, yeah, girl, you need to pay attention to, are you drinking more when you're around him? That's a concern, right? Like you have to, check yourself and check the people around you because inadvertently inadvertently um sometimes we change by association it's not always like a conscious choice but just over time like we start to change in association with who we are around and that's really important to pay attention to or sometimes like you're drinking more because that person is like bringing you down that's also super important to pay attention to Last thing that I noticed these last couple of months that I haven't been drinking, I feel better. Um, I'm sleeping better. Uh, my skin is better. Um, I'm eating better. I'm consistent about going to the gym. Um, I'm not in my feelings. I'm not depressed. Not saying that it fixed me, but I'm saying it made things better. It made everything better. So if you're thinking about giving alcohol a break, give it a break. Do 30 days. And let me be clear because I'm not a doctor, but I'm aware of withdrawal. If you have a problem with drinking, please get in contact with someone. Um, I understand cold turkey is going to be extremely difficult and I'm not encouraging that for you to do that because it can actually have detrimental effects on your body if your body is dependent on the substance. But I'm asking you to take the first step to either talk to a friend and say, hey, 
I've been drinking more than I'd like to for a long time, or I've been hiding this from you, talk to a family member and say, I would really like to address it. I'd really like to start doing something about it. And just connect with someone, connect with a professional, right? If you're having a problem with alcohol, connect with a professional and have them help guide you towards sobriety, help them help guide you towards, maybe it's not sobriety, maybe it's reducing the frequency, maybe it's reducing the amount, maybe it's going to therapy, like there's a lot of different ways. And I'm not saying that like after watching this video, everyone should become sober. No, I enjoy alcohol. I'm probably going to drink again, but am I going to drink like I was drinking when I was 27? No. Am I going to have multiple cocktails each weekend? No. But it's like, I'm also not going to deprive myself of a treat, but I need to, in order for you to enjoy alcohol, if you're those people that say like, no, I drink because I enjoy it. In order for you to enjoy it, I need you to assess your relationship with alcohol, to assess the way in which you use it to assess the frequency in which you use it. And if you do that and it's not excessive, like you're not overdoing it, then by all means, continue how you're doing. But if you are overdoing it, then I need you to scale it back, right? I need you to take a break. And I'm not, like I said, this video is not to make everyone become sober, but it's just to give you kind of a reality check of maybe you're doing things in a way that you shouldn't. Maybe you can stand to do things a little bit better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one. I may cut it up. Um, because I think the last 20 minutes are more compelling than the first where I talk about my experience with alcohol. But maybe there's something you took from that too. So let me know your thoughts. Do you currently drink? What was your first experience with alcohol? Um, are you considering being sober for a bit? What do you think that looks like for you? What are you most concerned about? What are you most scared about? And you know what? One more thing. I know this video is long as hell. But um, things that I, another thing that I've noticed is like, I don't go out as much because it's, different when everyone else is drinking and drunk so there are certain places or like parties that I'm like this is not my vibe because I'm sober but um there's some amazing mocktails out there if you're not familiar with mocktail m-o-c-k mocktail is like an imitation it's an imitation cocktail but it does not have alcohol if you go to a good bar that is like has great bartenders they will prepare you a drink that resembles a cocktail and that will even taste like fizzy and give you the illusion that you are drinking alcohol like if you really like the experience and taste and you like drinking socially try a mocktail they're great um and i think that's it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching if you made it all the way to the end my dogs need to come in i will see you guys on the next video thank you so much